Hi there, Laura here from Get Organized HQ, and we often talk about the hardest type of clutter, which is sentimental clutter, but I don't as often talk about the sneakiest type of clutter, which is all of those organizing containers and bins because they promise to deal with the very clutter that you are trying to get rid of. And so it doesn't really seem like clutter. It's a very, very sneaky, but as you can see behind me, and let me tell you, this is not all it can become clutter. So let's talk about it. Wow, we have so many bins. There's like big bins, laundry baskets, little bins, drawer organizers, wooden organizers, clear organizers, turntables, jars, specialty organizers. I mean, the list just keeps on going. So it's no wonder that we end up with so many different types of baskets and bins and organizers, and those very things become clutter itself. Also, I wanna point out, if you love organizing like me, then you probably love the baskets and bins. They're fun, they're fun to collect, it's fun to imagine using them, so it can become a real problem. And I wanna talk about how to tackle this. Now, the first thing that you need to do is to gather up all of your unused baskets, and bins, and containers, and bring them into one place. And yes, you really, really do need to do this. This alone is gonna be a game changer. Um, my mom recently did this, I am planning to do it soon, where you just, get it all together. Cause you can already see like when this was in, you know, a craft room where she used to use it and that was in a closet and so on. It just didn't look the same. It just, it looked innocent. It was one little bin, but when you bring them all together and you really see what you have, then it's going to make the process of deciding what to let go of and what to keep so much easier. And this is actually what a professional organizer would do if you hired one. One of the first things that they do and one of the huge benefits to hiring one is that they'll bring everything out and quickly get it categorized into one location. So you can do that for yourself if you want to or consider hiring a professional organizer to help you. All right, so once you've got it all in one place and you can see what you have, the first thing I would get rid of are one-offs and non-matching. So like we only actually have one of this red bin. We don't even have one in another color. So there's limited stuff you can do with that. It's not gonna match anything else. So it's pretty easy to say, get rid of this. So just look around and if you only have one or two of something, it's easy to get rid of. Now, one other thing to keep in mind is, think about this when you're buying containers is that you want them all to match. I actually call these your default bins. So every household should have default bins. And at a minimum, you should have one large type of bin. It's like something like this that would go more in a storage area, a garage, store seasonal decor, clothes that the kids have outgrown that somebody else might need and things like that. You should have one type, this is your default bin. So anytime you need more, that's the bin you have. Instead of having one purple bin, one clear bin, one green bin, have a default. And if it is your default, you are allowed to keep it. Same is true for one, what I would call a multi-purpose bin. So something that's kind of medium in size, maybe around this size, ideal if it comes in slightly different sizes, Open storage is ideal for this as well. I personally use the multi-purpose bins. I have an entire video on that that I will link to. And then these are the ones that you use for generic storage all throughout your home. So those you are allowed to keep. And then you should have one type of drawer organizer that is your default bin that you use in all of your drawers so you can keep those as well. Now, if you wanna have a couple different more types of default things because you maybe you have a pantry organizer or maybe you have a type of turntable, that's okay too. But I would start with those three at a minimum, decide what your default is, keep those and everything else goes. That makes everything so much easier. You automatically know what bin you're gonna get. Now I would caution you here against getting fun looking seasonal items for this. So I've been to Target before and they have like a pretty spring mint color and I'm like, oh, that's so pretty. And I buy it, but do you know what? When I go back in the winter, will they have that pretty spring mint color? No, they will not. Will they bring it back next spring? Maybe, maybe not. So I would go with your more generic colors that they're likely to have all the time. Like for example, the multi-purpose bins, I've been buying them now for 12 years. They haven't changed. I can go buy another one today and it's gonna fit right in with everything else that I have. All right, so once you've gotten rid of the non-matching ones, you know, you're still gonna have some, especially if you're like me and you like containers, that are a little tricky. So 
for those, I want you to get rid of any that you don't like. And I want you to think of this like clothing. Like, you know, if you ever have a shirt that looked really cute at the store on the mannequin and, and you think it's cute, but it's just not comfortable. I mean, maybe you have to like tug on it to get it situated just right all the time, or maybe it's like a little bit scratchy, or maybe you just feel self-conscious in it. And so even though you think it's pretty and it's sitting in your closet, you don't tend to reach for it, organizing bins are like that too. If it bugs you for any reason, maybe it doesn't slide nicely, maybe it doesn't stack nicely and you wish that it stacked, maybe like me, uh, the different sizes of it are different heights and that drives you absolutely crazy. Whatever it is, if it just, if you don't love it and you're not using it, just get rid of it. Another reason you're going to be tempted to keep things, maybe like these, I got a good deal on these. These were from the Dollar Tree, so they, back when they were only a dollar, now everything is $1.25. So these were really, really cheap. I got a good deal. Or maybe you found some bins on clearance or the ones at TJ Maxx or Home Goods where they don't have that many and so you feel compelled to hang on to them because of that. That is probably one of the worst reasons you can keep something. I mean, the $2 is already spent. I'm not getting that $2 back no matter what I do with these. And I'm not using them and I only have two of them. So the fact that I, that I got a great deal doesn't affect whether or not I should keep them. So if you're keeping something for that reason, I would encourage you to go ahead and get rid of it. Now, another reason we want to hang on to bins is because some of them are pretty. Like, I feel like this one is really pretty. Like, I love this mint color. It has a nice clear lid. And that can be a tempting reason to hang on to them. They can have like fun patterns and colors and all of that. But again, that's not a good reason to hold on to it because again, if it's sitting like in the corner of a closet or in a storage room, it doesn't matter how pretty it is. No one is enjoying that. If I don't need it, it's not pretty. Also, if I have like 22 different types of containers that I'm using in one space and they're all different, that's not going to be nearly as pretty as having matching containers. Probably the number one reason that people hang on to these bins, and this is the number one reason why I personally hang on to them, is that you might need it someday. But friends, let me tell you, this is the number one reason that people hang on to all types of clutter with the possible exception of sentimental clutter. So if that was a reason to keep things, we'd all be living with tons of clutter. That's really never a reason to keep clutter. Of course, you might need it someday. You might need anything someday. So it's just not really a great way reason to hang on to it. And here's some reasons why that I might need it someday isn't the best. First of all, if you should happen to need it someday, the first thing you're gonna need to be able to do is find it. Well, let me tell you, if you have 82 extra baskets and bins and some of them are over here and some of them are over here and then some of them are in a big stack in your garage, it's unlikely that you're gonna be able to find it. And I speak from personal experience. I have a storage room that's actually right behind me, full of bins. I mean, this is nothing. Um, it's full of bins. And I have literally gone to Target and purchased a bin because I thought I didn't have it only to go down there a couple weeks later and realize I had four empty ones sitting right there. So really and truly, it's not going to help you if you can't easily locate it. And then you may think, well, you know, I reorganize things from time to time, which, which we all do and it's completely normal and acceptable. Or you might think, what if my needs change? And they probably will. What exactly you have in your interior today may change in two or three or four years, but it's likely that you won't have the right amount of bins, they won't fit your stuff, they won't fit your space. It's gonna be so much easier if you can start from scratch rather than trying to hodgepodge just kind of whatever bins you happen to have. Also, mini bins are relatively easy to replace. So I may or may not be able to find this exact blue bin with holes at the Dollar Tree if I wanted to. But could I find a bin that is similar in size to this and open top pretty easily? Yes, I could. And I could even find it at the Dollar Tree. So if I was on a budget, I would be able to do that. So I just don't think it's worth having this take up precious space in my home and be another thing I have to manage. Now, if I can get rid of these bins, then anybody should be able to because let me tell you, I have a real bin problem. So not only do I love organizing, like the container store is one of my favorite places to go. So I just love having those bins. And then I, my literal job is to review organizing items. So I buy tons of different bins and baskets and things 
for the sole purpose of tr using them, trying them out, and being able to review them here on this channel for you. So then I acquire even more of them, and um, I get occasionally companies will send something to me for free, and so I add that to my collection, and as you can see, it quickly gets out of control. And then, here's what I'm thinking. Well, what if one day I wanted to do a video comparing these bins to the multi-purpose bins from the container store, so I might need them. Um, but friends, I'm getting rid of them anyway. Maybe, maybe, oh well, bummer if I do. I'll go to the Dollar Tree and I'll buy some two more dollars worth of little bins if I need to do that because right now it's just getting out of control. Like, I don't even wanna walk into my storage room because I'm just confronted with all of this stuff and it's overwhelming and I will tell you, I've literally like rebought things like this because I forgot that I had it or I thought that I had it but the thought of having to go dig through all this stuff was just overwhelming. So I am paring down. So if I can do it, I assure you, you can do it as well. Also, if you want to know what some of my favorites are, because I really truly do, like I rarely do I just like take it and like look at it, but like I actually try to use them so I can give you really good, honest reviews so that you can pick out the best types of bins for yourself. So I have a video on my top 10 organizing products. I'll link that below. Plus I have an entire little uh, ebook on all of my favorite organizing products from all the ones that I've tried. So if you want that, I will leave the link to that down below for you as well. So hopefully you won't have to acquire as many bins. You can go right to the tried and true, the very best and the very best for you.